This video was started immediately after I saw Arch's video, Shotguns, the right tool for the wrong player. Make sure to check out his channel after this video, he makes incredible video essays. In Arch's video, he stated that the shotgun in most shooters is poorly balanced because in many games, it's essentially a gimmick. Being able to win fights regardless of a player's skill at close range or with ideal cover. However, the shotgun provides very little value otherwise. For obvious reasons, this can be very detrimental integrity-wise, as the assault rifle has been adopted as the gun most games value skill in most, and the shotgun can trivialize the assault rifle with some disruptive playstyles being the best way to use it, namely camping in corners or just non-interaction. This is not good. Without getting into too much detail, his proposition was to increase the effective range to make the gun less of a gimmick, no longer requiring players to either go balls to the walls or have their balls stuck to the walls of the legs from sitting in a corner. So what's wrong with that? Aside from the fact that immediately after this solution, Arch proposed several shotguns that are extremely gimmicky and self-admittedly for lower skill players, this gun he proposed is less of a gimmick, requires skill to hit headshots, and is overall a better shotgun than what is in most of our shooters today. So to answer what's wrong with this shotgun, I'm going to take you to a very dark place. A place of flossing, V-Bucks, and John Wick. I didn't want to do this, but we're going to Fortnite. Ignoring how completely terrible this game is currently, there was a time when Fortnite had rather competitive mechanics and a fantastic shotgun. I personally used to participate in tournaments back in its prime, and I really enjoyed the game. Looking at the stats, the shotgun from Fortnite's past might seem really weak if you've played mostly first-person shooters. Low damage, terrible range, having to hit nearly every pellet in the head to even hope for a one-shot? Why would anyone use this when you could just absolutely shred someone with an SMG or just beam them from across the map with an assault rifle? The answer to this is building. Fortnite's signature mechanic is that you can build, which essentially boiled down to who could make tighter jumps, have faster movement and builds, and at the end of the day, who could get on top of their opponent. So when there came a time for you to shoot at your opponent, you were above them, so you had high ground with a better chance at shooting their head, while they could only get a disadvantaged shot from low ground. Because you could build barriers around the shots of any weapon, rather than being a game of sitting in a corner, Fortnite was a high intensity movement shooter where you pretty much only had a split second to dish out as much burst damage as possible. If you were serious, shotguns were realistically the only pick you could make. Birthed out of the building mechanics, the extremely niche shotgun became meta rather than the assault rifle in most shooters. Was it gimmicky? Low skill? Boring? Frustrating? No, it was incredible. The reason why the shotgun worked for Fortnite was the game was not a shooter. It was primarily a movement or building game. The difference here is obvious. While the games Arch is talking about are games focused on positioning and aim and most of the things that regular first person shooters focus on, Fortnite was a movement shooter and the mechanics that made a great player in Fortnite were extremely different from the games Arch was talking about. In this case study, shotguns only work in Fortnite because as a shooter, it rewarded very different skills. Well then, what am I talking about? Like, these games are completely different. Why would I bring up shotguns in this example when he's trying to talk about shotguns in Counter-Strike, Valorant, Call of Duty, these standard first-person shooters? You saw it in the title, The Game Designer's Fallacy. I'd introduce it to you, but Arch said it himself. No matter who you are, how much experience you have, or what you play on, in the perfect game, there is always a weapon for you to pick that fits your playstyle. This is simply untrue. While the variety of weapons in Fortnite existed just as it does in tax shooters, there's one important distinction. 
Due to the building mechanic in Fortnite, you rarely had the opportunity to deal damage for more than just a split second, nearly always from point blank range. You could use another weapon, but you'd simply be doing less damage, since you only have time to get a few bullets off. In this case, the variety of weaponry is completely worthless. You can play with a variety for fun, but not realistically gain anything aside from fringe cases. In contrast, in pack shooters, fights take place at close, medium, long range, with teammates at your back, without them at your back, against one enemy, three enemies, five enemies, with utility, without utility. I could go on, but I, I won't. Due to the massive variety in engagements, the one-shot headshot of the assault rifle from any range allows for success at every single one of these engagements. It is a fantastic choice no matter what. Arch seems to be obsessed with creating niches for each of these different engagements and with different weapons, but there's truly no need. These games are built off of the backs of how you can use an assault rifle to its fullest potential, using positioning, teamwork, and raw skill to push these simple yet beautiful mechanics to their absolute limits. Although Arch's shotgun is better, no matter how you balance the shotgun, the fact that it isn't an assault rifle means you're simply giving up variety for a win button at close range. Needless to say, a shotgun can win at one range against one opponent. This does not create a more interesting game. It just means that if the stars align perfectly, you forgo all of these beautiful mechanics and win because you made a stupid ass choice. Competitive games need to be built around what mechanics they truly value, and every part of the game should reflect that. You like shotguns, and even though they're a poor decision, you want to play with them just for fun so the game doesn't get stale? There's a mode for that. Do not muddy the waters by adding unnecessary and disruptive content. We know what that turns a game into.